your attention. Thank you, Mary Fan. I stand here today because of one, the sacrifices of my forefathers, and two, Boys of Rosso from Colorado. I cannot begin my story without honoring my ancestors. During the early to mid-1900s, people of Nepalese descent were either sold or sent voluntarily to the happiest nation on earth, our motherland, Bhutan. Nepali people were excellent at agriculture, and the lush southern border of Bhutan needed their expertise to flourish. Pretty soon after the arrival of my great-grandparents and others, the southern region became the main business center for Bhutan. My ancestors were recognized for their hard work and acknowledged with their rightfully earned citizenship. My great-grandfather was a citizen, my grandfather was a citizen, and so were both of my parents. But soon, the great monarch became fearful of the Nepali southerners' power. My grandfather was put in jail for three months and ten days because he refused to give up his citizenship. He refused to give up our armed features. His efforts failed. He had to sell a half a million rupees worth of land and wealth for just about nothing, and he fled back to Nepal. We did have some hope. Nepal was supposed to be our ethnic claim, our sanctuary, our holy land. But Nepal refused to accept us. Bhutan kicked us out of our homes, and India was in the middle, shooting at us all. I thank my family. I thank my grandparents for making the decision to persist despite war to the UN established refugee camps. That is where I was born, in a refugee camp. My mother was a teenager when she gave birth to me. Her dream was to be a doctor. She was and still is the smartest person in her family. Had life given her other options than the refugee camp, she'd probably be a doctor today, but life gave her me. She made it her mission to make me the most educated person in the family. My mother and my aunt were my first teachers. They helped me shape an understanding of the world. After relocating to America, my entire world flipped upside down. I was put into the fourth grade and my mother could not help me with school anymore. She could barely speak English. And so today, I'm the forefront for my family. I'm known as the girl that never lets an opportunity go by. My grandfather did not get tortured in jail for three months for me to be picky about the resources that come my way. I am the product of my family's hardship and struggle. I have to do what it takes to secure a future for generations to come. I'm thankful for the day boys or girls who adopted me into their family. Because as strong as mine is, I needed more support in achieving my potential in my academic and extracurricular endeavors. I was 14 when I got my first job. Boy, so Girls Up was right there, teaching me time management. I was 16 when I received my nursing license because of the encouragement Boy, so Girls Up provided. I graduated high school at the top of my class and received the Daniel Scholarship because Boy, so Girls Up was in the background, editing my essays. I learned the importance of discipline, time management, and networking through Boy, so Girls Up. My adopted family did not give up on me. And so this spring, I will be graduating early from the University of Denver with my bachelor's I will be graduating with my bachelor's in molecular biology and a concentration in cognitive neuroscience. And the kicker, I won't even be 21. I plan to go to medical school, but I'm going to take it slow and get my master's in public health first while working in either the political or the public health sector. I thank my family and boys or girls from the bottom of my heart for not giving up on me. I owe them my success.